In this lecture, we will talk about approximating continuous states uh, and introduce more specifically the concept of value function approximation uh, using the local approximation value iteration package. So approximate methods are there for us to deal with either continuous state spaces or extremely large state spaces uh, by discretizing them into something finer and or into something finite. Uh, a classic problem called the mountain car problem is popular in the reinforcement learning environments uh, where we try to move a low powered car up a hill to a goal. And so here we'll use the POMDP policies package uh, to just create some random or some, some hard coded uh, control policy um, that says if the, if the velocity is negative, then push left, keep, you know, the velocity negative. If it, the velocity is positive, then push right otherwise. And so we can see a GIF of that hard-coded policy here where we want to get the agent up the hill to the goal using this momentum. Now to formulate this um, as an MDP, we say, okay, first there's continuous states, which is x position and velocity, and these are real values, so there's um, technically an infinite number of uh, states we can have here. Um, our discrete action space consists of pushing left, which is just a negative one velocity, uh, no push at all, which is a zero velocity, or push right, which is a plus one velocity. Uh, and our reward, which is um, either we get 0 0.5, if we reach the goal, we get some small positive reward. Otherwise, every time step, we'll get a reward of negative one. So this encourages the agent to do it quickly. And then it, we terminate the MDP when our X position is greater than 0 0.5 means we reach the goal. So just as the uh, particle filters, we will use a generative model, which means we don't have to explicitly define the state space, which is continuous um, in, in our case. So what we do is this gen function will give in a state in action. Um, it's going to apply the dynamics uh, to increase the velocity and change the position uh, based on the action that we take. Um, and it will clamp it to the min and max values of our velocity. Uh, apply that to our x position uh, as our new x position. And then it will compute the reward itself, which, which I defined above, that just says if our x position is you know, greater than 0.5, which is the goal is reached, we get some positive reward. Otherwise, we always get a negative reward. And we return our new state, which is a vector of our position and velocity uh, and the reward itself. We can define our action space, which as mentioned is the negative one, which is push left, no push or push right. Our initial state we'll say is just deterministic at um, position negative uh, 0 0.5 and no velocity. We'll have a discount factor of 9 point, uh, 0.95 and our termination uh, as described is just when we reach the goal, when our position is at the goal. And then this is the render function that just defines the, the hill and, you know, can fancy stuff for the flag. So how do we learn a policy using approximation? This is where it gets fun. So the idea is we want to discretize this infinite space of positions and infinite space of velocities that our agent could actually be in into something finite. And so first what we'll do is we want to define the min and the max values of our states, both for position, which is negative 1.2 and 0 0.5, and for velocity, which is uh, negative 0 0.07 and positive 0 0.07. And then we want to define how um, fine we discretize our state space. And we'll just say, you know, for each of these, we want five values in between these ranges. And so using the grid interpolations package, uh, we can define a rectangular grid that is a range from the min position to the max position, you know, with some discrete length of five, and the same range of the min velocity and max velocity with a discrete length of five. So what this turns an infinite continuous number uh, rather a continuous space with infinite number of possibilities down to just 25 discrete values. And we can actually see what this looks like um, here where this is us discretizing an infinite space of all possible values in this box. And what's kind of fun is we can move around this grid um, and 
And what we're going to try to do is uh, using what's called um, local approximate local approximation value iteration. We're going to say if we sample we're actually in this continuous state here. We're going to get a value at these discrete spots and we're going to weight them by how close we are. And that's shown here in these lines. And so what this does is as we explore this infinite space, we're actually just computing the value at this blue, what we call interpolant, that's interpolated between its neighboring states based on how close it is. And, and that's shown in the weights here. Um, and what's nice about that is this goes from a continuous space to something finite and discrete. And we can also play around with you know, how discretized this space is. And we can see, okay, if it's extremely fine, we'll you know, have probably a better estimate, a better approximation because we're kind of fine tuning how we discretize this continuous space. So now that we have this grid, this discretized grid set up, um, we can define how we want to interpolate this grid. And so what we'll use um, that comes from the local function approximation package is what we call, or rather what is called, um, local grid interpolation function approximation. And so we'll instantiate that interpolator, which really is a fancy way to say we're going to approximate our value just by linear interpolating um, as I shown on that grid. And so given that interpolator, then we can solve using uh, what's called local approximation value iteration. Uh, and so it'll find the optimal policy given the interpolation, but not necessarily the optimal policy of the um, continuous problem. Um, this will be an approximate, op uh, approximate policy, approximately optimal policy, excuse me. And then we can solve the MDP to produce a policy like, like we do before. Um, and here's some details if you're interested, and I would refer to uh, the references for uh, kind of more technical details about how this works. Uh, but the idea is that we're going to approximate the value function here with some parameters. And in this case, this is approximating it using that uh, interpolated grid. And then we can compute the optimal policy within this setting um, using value iteration as we've seen before. And so given a policy that we learned, we can animate how it plays out in simulation. And so in this case, we can see the agent correctly um, makes it up the hill using its momentum and reaches the goal. And now let's simulate an episode and look exactly at what's happening in this in the value function space and what's happening with the policy. So what we'll do is we'll get the history recorder from PomDP simulators. We'll get some random initial state, which is actually deterministically uh, positioned. We'll create that history recorder, which we'll use to simulate um, our MDP given that policy and given that initial state. And we have this collection of, of histories or of steps in a history. And so what we'll do is we'll use the value and the action function that come from the PomDP's interface to evaluate our policy at a particular state and see what the action is at a particular state. And so we can see here that if we step simulation time, we can see what our current state is, which is our position and our velocity and what our current action is. And we can see that the key value for each of these um, is relatively similar, but the, the uh, biggest one here, which is the one we want to maximize, uh, is the one that the policy uh, selects. So the action um, tends to be uh, output is negative one or left. So as we step our simulator, we'll see these change. We'll see what's happening to the policy uh, in real time. Uh, we can see, okay, now right about now is where we switch because we're you know the policy learned that this is a, a good thing to do um, and we can keep pushing through this simulation time and we'll be able to kind of inspect each of these values and the policy output itself uh, and finally we reach the goal and um, 
know, at this point, it doesn't matter. They all have the same uh, Q value. What's also nice about this is if we visualize the value function um, here, which shows kind of the, the discretized state space, we have position and velocity, um, where the, the colors indicate you know, the value, the, the, the ye more yellow the color, the better the value is, which again, we want to maximize this value. And it also shows you know, how we're weighting the, the actual discretized value at each of these indiv individual points, getting some weighted sum of that to uh, uh, be combined into you know, this continuous space. And on the policy plot on the, on, uh, the right-hand side, uh, in the title, we'll show what's the current action that's output by the policy. And also, this shows um, the space of actions. And the, again, the, the weighting here is determined by the discretization. So what we can see is if we step through this, we can pay attention here to the value function. We, we're kind of moving in this continuous space of position on the x and velocity. This is the state space we're moving in. And it's showing kind of what value we're getting as we kind of move around this space. And again, all I'm doing is changing the time. And this is associated with the particular position and velocity here, which is, defines our state. And you can see. We're going fast, right? Our velocity is high. Our position is close to the goal. And we're kind of inching towards this really good value. And as we go and finally reach the goal, we end up in um, one of the higher value uh, sections. So this is a good way to visualize what's really going on under the hood in trying to approximate that value function using these discretized states and then just getting that weighted value uh, as we're kind of exploring this continuous space. And I find this, this to be really um, intuitive as you play around with it. And I would encourage you to, to play around with this on your own time. And that's the end of this lecture. Um, the original mountain car problem was proposed by Andrew Moore in his 1990 PhD thesis. Um, and the next lecture I'll introduce the pendulum problem and solve it using deep reinforcement learning.